It's a piece that's very much influenced by Greek mythology. So I remember being very young, the first Greek saga I read was Heracles, which I loved very much. I mean, he was known for his very bad temper. He was very hot-headed. So he did not only kill his music teacher when he was unable to play the pieces he wanted. He didn't treat his family very well and there was a point where the gods told him, look, you really have to kind of make up for that. And his half-brother then gave him these tasks and one of these tasks was to get the apples of the Hesperides. And uh, these apples, they have been planted in the garden by the goddess Hera and uh, they give eternal life to the gods. So evidently something everyone wants to have and uh, getting them is not so completely easy, so Heracles actually has to go and talk to Atlas because Atlas is the only one who can um, overcome the dragon who is guarding these apples. And Atlas, as you might know, he is carrying on his shoulder the whole uh, firmament. When Heracles asks Atlas, well, can you please help me with the dragon? Atlas says, well, I cannot do this with this on my shoulder. So can you please take it over while I go and do that for you? And Heracles obviously cannot say no, he takes it. And Atlas goes and kills the dragon, which you hear the entire third movement is a big dragon hunt. Then he realizes how nice it is not having to carry that thing. So he goes back to Heracles and says, I got the apples, but you can keep this firmament. I don't want it back. And then, of course, uh, Heracles is very, very smart because his protecting god is uh, Mercury or uh, Hermes, the god of the very smart and cunning um, way of thinking. And um, he says, well, I'm not used to carrying this heavy thing. It hurts. Can you maybe let me make myself a little uh, cover so I can put it on that cover on my shoulder? And Atlas, he's not someone to see through this ruse. He's one of the old titans. So he agrees because he has compassion too. And then of course, Heracles runs off. Atlas is the cellist in that sense, the solo cello. I mean, one of the qualities of, of Nicholas, it's a, a kind of, how do you say? He's the one who asked it of me. He has fantastic black basses. I mean, like you maybe only the Russian basses have, like these very profound, powerful basses. It really came together so, so, so well. And I also have to thank the orchestra for being such wonderful companions. The creation process is always some mysterious uh, look for hypothetic uh, conclusions. And it's a, it's a very strange feeling when you got to the point where you feel you're there without being able yourself to explain to anybody why. But um, about that piece I can tell the inspiration source was of course very much Nicolas' own personality, like this explosive cello playing 
uh, skills and the generosity he always brings to anything he's doing. Um, and at that time, he and I had frequent conversations about the ecological necessity for the whole humanity to consider how our planet and how our oceans especially uh, need some knowledge, some scientific considerations. This is the time I got more interested into how we as a species developed a certain art to cultivate food from Earth. And this is also the reason where the third movement is called Seeds and the second movement is called Sea and the first one is called Sea and the last one is called Sea. So the title of the piece is Sea, Sea and Seeds. Sea meaning see, like look, like open your eyes to that important question of environmental respect. The second movement is called sea, like the sea, oceans. Why is it so important on, the, on our planet? More than 70% of the surface of Earth is actually ocean. And um, the ocean is m m very much suffering from our activity. And um, the sea, the last movement, C S E. It's like a statement of will. Nicola is also looking for a certain coherence with other pieces in coherence with Lokenar's project and also that nature thematic, more or less connection. Atlas is like that giant carrying the planet. In my piece there is this question, of, as I've said, about the sea, about the, the biological systems. I'm sure about something, Nicola has a spectacular energy and uh, he never gets tired of looking for better and better and better. So uh, I feel we are always on that progression line.